terrible way for a beautiful dame like that to die. I've seen her murdered in all kinds of brutal ways. But this dame, that face, blasted at close range with a shotgun. Danny, what are you up to? You scared the life out of me. I thought you were through investigating the place. That doesn't give you any right to be here. How'd you get in with a pass key? Yeah. Being the janitor's son. I was just going over her records. What's that you're playing? I guess Laura was playing it the night she died. It was her favorite. Gee, Mr. McPherson, why would anyone want to kill a swell girl like Laura Howe? I don't know, Danny. That's what I'm here to find out. If I catch him, if I catch him... You thought a lot of her, didn't you? Thought a lot of her. I thought as much as her as my own ma. She always had time for me. Ma's always so busy. Not Laura. She was never too busy for me. I'm sorry for you, Danny. You know something? I think I would have liked her, too. Everybody did. But there's only one thing I didn't understand about her. No, two things. What are they? Mr. Leidecker and Mr. Carpenter. What about them? I never knew what she saw in those two squares. You don't like them? No. Jealous? Nah. But I sure didn't want her to marry that slug Carpenter. And as for that Drip Leidecker... Mr. Drip Leidecker to you, Sonny. What were you saying, my midget friend? Well, I mean it. She was too good for you. That is a matter of opinion. Hello, Lodicker. How do you do? The flesh is still warm, and they sit here ghoulishly playing one of her records. It was the last record she played. She liked it. An unfortunate weakness in one whose taste was otherwise flawless. Those of us who loved her prefer to cherish the memory of a gracious soul. What brings you here, Mr. Lodicker? Precisely the question I was about to ask you. Didn't I read that the constabulary had evacuated the premises? You haven't answered my question. I was curious to see the devastation that usually follows in the wake of the police. For the past three days, I've been sitting in my apartment shuddering at the thought of their heavy hands on her things. You're not writing a usual flowery column at the moment, Mr. Lester. Oh, you read it? I didn't say that. Is it perchance too literate for you? Frankly, too corny. Now I'd like to know what brings you here. I want to be of help to you, Mr. McPherson. Uh, there are some things about Laura that I alone knew. And if I may say so, to solve the puzzle of a woman's death, one must first resolve the mystery of her life. Well, that's pretty elementary, Watson. Greetings. Well, don't stand there gaping, Bessie. The detective's holding open house. Why don't you go and whip up some canapes? Um, Bessie came up here with me to help me take inventory. Is that all right with you? Go right ahead. But nothing leaves the apartment till I'm through the case. Laura's sister wrote and asked me to take care of her things. Why you? Why not? As her fiancé, I'd be expected to, wouldn't I? I can still see her lying there. Bessie, be quiet, will you? I'd better get started on her things. See, Mr. Carpenter, can I have some of her records? Well, I... Uh, the vultures gather. Danny, you better run along now. We'll talk about the records in a few days. You make out a list of the ones you want, and we'll see what we can do about it. Shelby, as possible heir, it may interest you to know that the Ascot Galleries thinks they, they can sell this picture. I'm keeping it myself. I don't know why. The painter was so much in love with her that he lost all perspective. You were jealous of him. Laura thought enough of it to hang it in her living room. Does it look like her? Yes, it does, remarkably. It captures all her warmth and... Vitality. Nonsense. It makes her look like a willful, empty-headed jade. I resent that. She may have been spirited, but she was sane and thoughtful in everything she did. That's what I liked about her. What do you know about it? More than you think, even though I never met her. Second-hand omniscience, eh? Often more objective than first-hand contact. 
I've been looking at this dame for three days now. Been through her correspondence, checkbooks, bureau closets. I know her choice in food, liquor, clothes, and perfume. It all adds up to one thing. She must have been quite a dame. Would you kindly refrain from referring to Laura as a dame? What would you call her? She was a woman of distinction, of great beauty and character. I'm sure of that. She must have been quite a dame, too. Seems to me that you're more interested in the victim than in the murderer. Could you come in and look at a few things, Mr. Carpenter? Yes. I wish he'd take it away. It violates my memory of her. Why? Why? I'll show you why. I've gone through that already. Well, take another look at this album and see if you think the portrait does her justice. Now then. Now, do these look anything like the worn in the portrait? Has that fool painter caught anything of that? The real Laura? Look, here's what she looked like when she was getting started in the advertising business. I gave her her start, but it was through her own talent that she was enabled to rise to the top of her profession and stay there. Uh, through me, she met everyone and captivated them all. She had warmth and vitality. She had an authentic magnetism. But it was through me that she became what she did. I created the beautiful woman you see here. I wouldn't take so much credit if I were you. Seems to me nature gave you a mighty big hand. You mean you would compare this picture with the one that I created? Yes, and you know something? I like the other one better. That doesn't surprise me. It would seem to me that your taste runs more to the fronts of Flatbush and the dames in the Bronx. Were you in love with her? My love for Laura was not merely a man's desire for a pretty young girl. I was a cold and egocentric man who amused himself by showering a naive child with treats and trinkets. Her gratitude warmed me. Was she in love with you? Alas, no. But she considered me to be the wisest, wittiest, and the most interesting man she'd ever met. I was in complete accord with her on that point. Macpherson, you wouldn't understand this, but I tried to become the kindest, gentlest, and most sympathetic man in the whole world. And brother, did you fail? Someday, Macpherson, at the slightest provocation, I'm going to take after you in my column, hammer and tongs. I may even see to it that you lose your job. Now then, shall we have a drink on that? Well, Sherlock, a clue. A bottle of the cheapest bourbon. Where did this come from? The only bourbon that Laura ever used was Old Reserve. I put it there. Was this Miss Howes? She wouldn't drink that awful stuff. And whose was it? I don't know. Bessie, you thought a lot of Miss Howe, didn't you? I loved her. Ask anyone, anyone who ever came to this apartment, who wasn't only on the count of the thousand and one sweet things she did for me, the presents and the clothes she gave me. It was because she was so sweet herself. Because she was a real fine lady. Bessie, if you thought so much of her, you'd like to find the murder, wouldn't you? Yes. yes. What about the bottle, then? Who are you shielding? Her. Huh? Miss Howe. Miss Howe's dead. But her reputation isn't. And I didn't want anybody getting any wrong ideas about her. God rest her kind soul. That's why I took it off her dressing table and put it in the cabinet before the police got here. What did you do then? I washed the glasses, cleaned off the bottle, and I took a wet rag to everything in the apartment. I don't believe in fingerprints. You know what happens to people who destroy evidence? I don't care. I'd do it all over again for her. You go on back about your work. I'll talk to you later. <laughs> ah, Shelby. Bessie's been revealing some interesting things about your fiancé. Apparently, I was not your only rival. What do you mean? She deserted us on Friday night to keep a tryst with someone in this apartment. Well, that's a malicious lie. Mute evidence. A bottle of the cheapest bourbon and two glasses by her. Cut it out, Lidecker. We have no proof of anything. So don't talk like that about it, you understand? My, my, my. I'm beginning to think that if Laura had lived, 
there would have been three of us in love with her. Uh, with the exception of the fact, Mr. McPherson, that had she lived, you would never have met her. You didn't exactly travel in the same circles, did you? Rather ironic, don't you think? I must remind myself to do a column on it sometime. Well, I think we could all do with a drink. Hello, Hendricks. I'm up at the Howe place. You better get a man to tail Carpenter. Just left here. I'll be over at the Athletic Club in about ten minutes. Well, call headquarters and have another man take your place. Nothing much. So long. You suspect him? I suspect everyone, you included. But how exciting. I've never been a suspect before. I think I shall enjoy it. Well, I better be running along now. Will you put a tail on me, too, when I leave? That won't be necessary. Why not? I'm going to take a run over to your place with you. But whatever for? Oh, I don't know. Maybe I'd just like to see how the idle rich live. But my good man, I have no time for such nonsense. I, I have an appointment. I must shave and bathe. That's fine. I'll scrub your back. This is an exact duplicate of the clock in her apartment, isn't it? Yes. And incidentally, the other clock belongs to me, too. There are several things in her apartment which belong to me, and I intend to get them back. If Shelby thinks for a minute that he or her sister is going to have them, he's sadly mistaken. Now, see here, McPherson. It's all very well you're going through her correspondence, but mine. What have you got there? On Friday night, Laura had a dinner engagement with me, after which she was ostensibly going out of town. She phoned and canceled our engagement at exactly 7 o'clock. I ate a lonely dinner, then got into my tub to read. Well, why do you find that so interesting? I told you that the first time you questioned me. Yes, I know. But why did you write it down? Are you afraid you might forget it? I am one of the most widely misquoted men in America. When my friends do it, I resent it. From either Sergeant Schultz or yourself, I should find it intolerable. Now, why don't you go and pester Shelby for a change and leave me to my bathing? And by the way, I have a tip for you. It might interest you to know that Shelby collects shotguns. I've seen the collection. The warehouse records show the guns haven't been touched in over a year. There's a layer of dust on the cases. A man might have shotguns that he didn't keep in a warehouse. I doubt that Carpenter have the type that was used. Poor Laura. How ironic. If it was Shelby, to have discovered his treachery before she died. What do you suppose she saw in him, anyway? All of us who loved her pondered that mystery. But I suppose it was because she pitied him. Why? He was an alcoholic when she met him down at the heels and couldn't hold a job. She managed to get him into her agency and straightened him out and helped him along. Hand me that towel, you. This one. And the rope. And uh, don't touch anything in there. They're, they're all collector's items. They're priceless. so smug about. Tell me, Mr. McPherson, have you ever been married? I don't know what that has to do with anything, but no, I've never been married. I thought not. Why? Your interest in Laura is more than professional. To solve the mystery of a woman's death, you must first know her life. You said that yourself. Why have you never been married? Once I wanted, we're always married. Very interesting, this passion that you have for women that are unavailable. What's this all about? That call was from the Ascot Galleries. They wanted to know if I was interested in buying the picture in as much as a certain Mr. McPherson had put in a bid for it.
are you? You're alive. If you don't get out of here at once, I'm going to call the police. You are Laura Howe, aren't you? Aren't you Laura Howe? I'm going to call the police. I am the police. Mark McPherson. You all right? Well, yes. What's this all about? Don't you know, didn't you? Haven't you read the papers? Don't you know what happened? No. Where have you been? My country place, we don't get a paper there. Haven't you got a radio? My radio was broken. Would you tell me what this is all about? Well, somebody was murdered in this room. Any idea who it was? No. Sure? Yes. When did this happen? Friday night. You better have a drink. What are you going to do? Find out who was murdered. Then find the murderer. Do you feel up to answering any questions now? No, let, let, let me just get these things off first. Excuse me. Look, I found this hanging in my closet. It's Diane Redfern's dress. Who's Diane Redfern? One of our models. But it wasn't hanging there when I left. Has she ever stayed here? No. Killed Diane Redfern thinking it was me. How could she have gotten in here? I don't know. This is Monday night. You left Friday. It's a rather long weekend, isn't it? Yes, I always go for a long weekend. What train did you take? 726 to Stonehurst. See anybody in the train? No. Then what? I got off the train at Stonehurst. See anybody you know in the station? No. Go on. I got off the train and I went to the garage where I kept my car. It's, it's a private garage. Nobody saw me there either. And I drove home. You were there for three days. What'd you do? I read, worked in my garden. Didn't you go out in all that time? No, I had everything I needed at the house. No one came to see you? Nobody. The police were there Saturday. There was no one in the house. Oh, I went for a long walk on Saturday. I walked for a long time. You were to marry Shelby Carpenter this week. Thursday, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Yet you went away just before your wedding for a long weekend to be alone. Yes, I was upset. What about? Well, Diane Redfern came to my office on Friday morning to tell me that she was in love with the man I was going to marry. It worried me, although I knew she meant nothing to Shelby. Did he have a key to the apartment? No. You sure she meant nothing to him? Absolutely nothing. She was found here in your apartment wearing your clothes. Doesn't that strike you as being odd? Did you suspect that he'd bring her here Friday night? How should I? He has no key. And I don't know that he brought her here. Neither do you. You merely assume it. Her other assumption is possible. If you love this fellow Carpenter so much, you'd risk your own safety to protect him. My safety? Are you suspecting me? The unfortunate position of having to suspect everyone. Don't you see that I'm just trying to get at the truth? Yes. I see, you read things I meant nobody else ever to see. That's strange. You know how I feel about things and people. It makes a kind of intimacy between us. Yet I hardly know you. You hardly know me, that's right. But I know a great deal about you. Excuse me, I have some phone calls to make. Sorry, but I must ask you not to use the phone or leave the apartment. But shouldn't I let people know I'm alive? No. Well, why? If someone was after you and they knew you were alive, they might try again. Oh. Well, am I under arrest? No. 
But if anything happens to you this time, I wouldn't like it. Well, I better say goodbye. I'll see you in the morning. Oh, one more thing. It'll save us a lot of unnecessary fencing. You want a way to make up your mind about marrying Carpenter. What'd you decide? Decided not to marry him. I'll see you in the morning. And don't worry. Good night. Wasn't Laura Howe that was murdered. There was a model by the name of Diane Redfern. Yeah? How'd they find out? Well, her sister reported her missing since Friday. She insisted on going through the morgue and identified her. I will tell the chief to keep it out of the papers. I want to handle this my way. Hello? It's Laura. I... Don't say anything on the phone. Meet me right away in front of the art museum. I don't know better than to trust dames. Come on. You follow her, I'll tail Carpenter. been fired lately. Yeah, I used it hunting the last weekend I stayed here. You know about guns, don't you? Yeah. Why didn't you clean it afterwards? Guess I forgot. These your initials? Yes. I gave the gun to Laura. For protection. She didn't want it, but I insisted. See, her house here is rather isolated. Did you teach her how to use it? No. Does she know how? I don't know. It never occurred to me to ask. You're a rather vague fellow, Carpenter. You haven't bought it lately, have you? Didn't just bring it back tonight. Look, you followed me here. You saw me come in. You ought to know. You realize the spot you're in, Carpenter? If you don't come clean, you'll find yourself under arrest for the murder of Diane Redfern. But I didn't kill her, and I wouldn't have taken her there if I knew she... Come on, Carpenter, spill the rest of it. I know you took her there. If you didn't kill her, you better start talking here and now. You're in deeper than you think. I didn't tell you this before because I was afraid that things would look bad for me. Things look plenty bad. So you better get it all off your chest. Laura kept a duplicate key to her apartment at the office. I went over and got it. I'd asked Diane Redfern to have dinner with me. I wanted to have it out with her once and for all. You see, she thought... She thought she was in love with me. You in love with her? No, I wasn't. Go on. When Diane got too upset to talk in public, we couldn't go to her place. She lived with her sister. I didn't want to take her to my hotel. So we bought a bottle and went to Laura's. We talked for a couple of hours, and then the doorbell started ringing. Diane got frightened. But knowing Laura, I knew that her friends came to see her at all hours of the day or night with their troubles. So I told Diane to answer the door. Why didn't you answer it yourself? What if one of Laura's friends found me there? Why send Diane? I told her she could say that Laura let her use the apartment for the weekend. Why open at all? Well, they kept ringing and ringing insistently. I think if we hadn't opened, they'd have broken the door in. Anyway, I heard Diane go to the front door and open it. There was a moment's pause. And then a shot. Awful explosion. For a moment, I was too startled to move. And when I finally did, I found the front door closed and she was lying there. Didn't you go out to see if you could see anyone? No, no, I didn't. I was... I was too confused, too horrified. My first instinct was to call the police. Why didn't you? 
I don't know. I was scared, I guess. Not only for myself, but for Laura. In a panicky kind of way, I felt I must keep out of it. To keep Laura out of it. I know it was stupid and hopeless. But the one thing I had in mind was the safety of someone whose life was dearer to me than my own. Laura's safety. Don't you understand? Did you think Laura done it? Did you? I don't remember what I thought. Do you think so now? No, no. On Saturday when our men came to the hotel to tell you Laura was dead, you seemed sincerely shocked. I was. I hadn't expected that mistake. In the dark, I hadn't realized how mutilated she was. I mean that anyone would mistake her for Laura. What did you and Laura talk about tonight? I told her the whole story, just what I told you. She phoned you after she promised she wouldn't call anyone. What does she want? Only natural. She wanted to tell me she was still alive. Why don't you tell the truth? She sent you up here to get rid of that gun. She did not. She didn't know I was coming here. It was my own idea to come. Fine, doesn't it? Did you think it wouldn't? I hoped it wouldn't. Oh, hello. Why did you break your word and go out to see Carpenter last night? You forced me to give my word. I never have been and never shall be bound by anything I don't do of my own free will. May I have a cigarette? Sorry. Diane Ludfern was in love with Carpenter. You admitted that last night. I also told you he wasn't in love with her. I'll get it. Oh, no, no, not you again. Don't you ever take time off from your sleuthing? Hello, darling. Hello. How are you? So it's on again, is it? Hey, do I have to get a permit from the police department to uh, kiss my fiancée? So it made you change your mind. Speaking of changing one's mind, McPherson, I just came from seeing my lawyer. He tells me that anything I may have said last night was said under duress and uh, can't be used against me. Besides, none of it was true. Smart lawyer you got. Maybe it was the one that brought Diane Redfern up here. If the detective will permit me to leave the room, I'll get her some coffee. Uh, I can't answer questions from my lawyer, McPherson. If you'd like his name and phone number... I'd like a lot more than that, Carpenter. I'd like a... Hello. What are you doing? Hailing Carpenter? Nothing could interest me less. I've come here to talk business with you, but I prefer not to in his presence. I'm not interested in what you prefer. He's staying with you like it or not. Oh, very well, then, if that's the way you feel about it. I've just come from my lawyer's. Well, you two have been busy little beavers this morning. What did your lawyer have to say? It's about my possessions. That vase, I can prove that I only loaned it to Laura and I want it back. And that clock. Hold up. What? I'd like to get back to a little questioning I was doing when Mr. Lidecker fell apart. First of all, I'd like to know what Carpenter told you last night. Don't say anything, Laura. Let him speak to our lawyer. Our lawyer? So you're covering for each other. You know, McPherson, I'm beginning to think you'd lie just to make an arrest, get yourself a big shot in the headlines. I've got enough on you to make an arrest right now. Quick, McPherson, the handcuffs. You keep out of this. Well, I think you'd look kind of cute in bracelets. Lydecker, why don't you just faint again? The only time you ever kept your mouth shut. Cut it out. Carpenter? Regardless of what your lawyer says, I'd like you to repeat what you told me last night in Miss Howe's country place. I've already told you I... You two were at my country place last night. What on earth for? Laura, don't, don't say anything now. After you left Carpenter last night, I tailed him there. Why did you go there? To get the shotgun. What shotgun? The one he says he gave you, the one up over the mantel. You thought I did it? No, Laura, I... Well, why didn't you say so last night? I don't know which of you is acting. 
Now, which of you is lying? Well, I can tell you. I... Shut up. I don't always like my job. You'll have to come down to headquarters with me. You mean... Uh... Yeah. Well, irony of ironies. McPherson, you must have a twisted mind. You're madly in love with her, and still you want to send her to the chair. Right, Eckert. Laura, do you know that he offered a thousand dollars for your portrait when he thought that you were dead? My portrait? Miss Howe, we'd better go. Don't worry, darling. Let him accuse you. We'll fight. I have every weapon. Money, prestige, connections, and my column. You just try to prove her guilty. I line up public opinion on her side so that they'll be howling for your blood. I've got your number, McPherson. You only want to send her to the chair because you're only capable of loving a dead woman. Ledecker, you must enjoy being unconscious. Waldo! You're coming with me. Well, want something to get him some brandy. Get your things. trying to do, force a confession out of me. You've been holding out, and I want to know why. It'll go a lot easier if you tell the truth. What difference does it make what I say? You've made up your mind that I'm guilty. Are you? Don't tell me you have any doubts since you... Please, I can't. Do I have to have these lights in my face? Thank you. No, I didn't kill Don Redfern. Why did you tell me the radio in your country place was broken? Because it was. Not when I tried it. Oh, I didn't tell you. I asked a local handyman to fix it before I left the village. How'd you get in? I always leave a key under a flower pot on the porch. You're too intelligent to make up something I could check so easily. But you're intelligent enough to have broken the radio yourself to strengthen your story. The main thing I want to know is why you pulled the switch on me about Shelby. You told me last night you decided not to marry him. Yes, I suppose I did. But today it was on again. Why? Well, I changed my mind. What are you trying to hide? Don't you realize you're involved in a murder? What went on between you and Shelby when you saw him last night? Did he persuade you to make up? Or did you agree to pretend you had? Was that it? Well, you see... Well, I... He convinced you that if you broke the engagement now, people would think you believed he was guilty. Yes. But now I realize it's only because he thought I did it. Did you believe he was guilty? No, I'm sure he isn't. Are you in love with him? How could I be in love with a man who brings another woman to my apartment, lets her wear my things? I'm sorry I had to bring you down here. But I was 99% certain of you, and I had to get rid of that 1% doubt. And I did. You see, I'd reached the point where I needed official surroundings. You're satisfied now that I'm not guilty? Yes. And I apologize. Suppose you have a job to do. You're still a mystery to me, though. Oh? Well, for such a charming, intelligent girl, you certainly surround yourself with a remarkable collection of dopes. At the moment, I'm thinking of one whose initials begin with Waldo Lidecker. This is Miss Howe's apartment. Oh, I think there must be a mistake. Nobody ordered anything picked up. Yes, I'm sure you made a mistake. I 
do have such a clock, but I didn't call anybody about it. Sorry. What was that? The storage company. They said that someone would call them about picking up a grandfather's clock in the next few hours, and they wouldn't be able to make it till morning. Must have been Lidecker. Well, why else should he do that? That's his, isn't it? He gave it to me. He didn't loan it to you? Loan it to me? When he thought it was you who'd been murdered, he came here first thing, said he had several things that he'd loaned to you. Grandfather's clock was one of them. I don't understand. Why do you think he wants this thing so badly? He has one exactly like it. You know the combination on this? I didn't know it had one. Lidecker, after all. But why? You were going to marry Carton in a few days. If he couldn't have you, he was going to make sure no one else could. The doorbell rang. Diane Redfern came to the door in your negligee. He assumed it was you. He shot. Then he must have heard Carpenter coming in from the bedroom, so he hid in the stairway outside. Carpenter was so scared, he ran out as soon as he could. Lidecker came back and put the gun in the clock. Waldo, a murderer. Knowing he was being tailed, he knew he couldn't get a package out of the apartment without looking suspicious. Today was the first time he was alone here. He thought he'd be gone quite a while down at headquarters. Yes, but, but how would he explain to me that he had my clock taken away? Knowing Lydecker, he'd think of something. The main thing was to get the clock out of here. Well, what are you going to do? I'm going to go to his place right now. You better not touch the clock. Fingerprints will be important. Well, if Lydecker phones, try to be as normal as possible. If the doorbell rings, don't answer. After I go, put on the safety chain latch. Don't let anyone in. I'll be back as soon as possible. Lidecker's a killer. I'm going to pick him up now. Waldo. Yes, Laura. So that's the way it's going to be, is it? What do you mean? I'm never to have you, am I? Waldo. You were going to marry Shelby, and I couldn't stand that. Although you're through with Shelby, I can see what's happening. What are you talking about? Do you think I'm going to leave you to be bored by a second-rate detective who thinks you're a Dane? No, don't! Do you think I can bear the thought of him holding you in his arms, loving you and kissing you? Oh, you're mad! You're insane! Maybe. But if I am, you've driven me to it. Back of it, I'm supposed to be treating Lidecker. I'm going to. When he comes out. You mean he's still in there? Come on. Waldo, if you ever loved me, if you really loved me. If I really loved you, I have loved you more than life itself. Waldo, for the love of heaven. The person will find us together as we'll always be. But he'll find us both dead. No! Laura! Laura! Laura, I love you. In life, I could not have you. In death, you will be mine forever. You're all right. You're all right, Laura. Thank 
heaven for that.